The only thing that's unfortunate, there's just so much that I don't know, like, how things are gonna play out. I do, there, I do, I do think there's, like, a point knockoff for that. In terms of just... It's not so obvious how some of these things are actually gonna play out, because they're like, Oh yeah, this does this and this and this and this, but then, like, you don't know, like, the... What, like, I don't know what the bonus shit means. Right? Like, <laughs> I don't know how to fucking- like, I don't get it! I don't get it! Like, is it just this characteristic bonus? So, like, anything that says that would be, like, three for agility, or, like, uh, here with intelligence, plus five. Does that mean it's just, like, one- plus one bonus for every ten levels? Oh! Or is it stack with, like, my the items? So yeah, we're we're still learning that. Keep your wits about you. All right. I think uh, Conrad got away. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. But I'm not full sure. All right, hold on. We need to put this cape onto him. Uh, and. Then maybe also put these gloves on him, even though we are also raiding. Ra We're raising up some of the stuff that would give him like dodge chances. Although maybe not. We're, we're, we're more Let in a toughness. The heir is dead. He sacrificed himself to save the entire dynasty. A well. noble deed. Let the crew offer prayers for the hero who renounced his impure life in the name of humanity. I mean, he got turned into a fucking monster, so I don't know if that was really, like, that worth it. Okay. Always keep your eye on the prize. I think I just have to leave, is what's going on here, and why this is... Doesn't seem like anything's happening. Cause we came up from here. Keep your wits about you. Oh wait, here we go. Master Helmsman. Revore, Master Helmsman. System status report. By the Emperor, it's the Seneschal. Living and breathing. The white-haired man with sickly pale skin salutes you. Well, there's a tricky question. The whole place is so overgrown with foul wickedry. We'll be scrubbing it off the vid screens for the th for throne knows how long. Look, we need to re-establish contact with the Navigator's Sanctum. It's our only chance of escaping from the warp. Your words seem to knock the officers out of their stupor, and the air around you fills with voices and commands being issued. You hear someone sobbing, one of the survivors buckling under the stress. Abelard cuffs the crying officer without even looking. Restore the Vox Channel to the Navigator's Sanctum. Ready the crew. Prepare for translation to real space. Abelard pauses for a few seconds before turning to you. Jade, you may call me superstitious, but translation is not a good time to disregard rules. You are the only one who speaks for House Von Val Valancius. You may not be the Lord Captain, but you, more than anyone else, deserve to take her place in the ritual that is about to, come in, uh, to commence. He directs your attention upward to the throne that sits at the apex of the tall staircase. Uh, well. What must I do? Take the Lord Captain's seat. Order the final preparations. Wait for the officers to report. Bah, blast out of the void. Translation is a craft, not something to be explained in a tick. Just go up to the throne, Mistress Jade. These people are about to do the impossible. The least they deserve is the solace of seeing a figure sitting in the usual spot. Please, hurry. Every second we waste is a terrible risk. All right, I'm heading up. I guess this is my ship now. I'm about to be the new Lord Captain, the rogue trader. The image before you is hazy, swaying in sorcerous currents invisible to mortal eyes, as if whatever is beneath this thin shell is constantly changing while still remaining the same. It has taken on the guise of Theodora, but the false rogue trade's eyes reveal the entity's true, surreal nature. One of Theodora's eyes is engulfed in otherworldly fire. The other, a vessel of ancient evil, bores into you. 
A voice seeps directly into your brain without ever reaching your ears, and this voice booms with all the horrors of the warp. Who are you to oppose destiny itself for the sake of lives that are not your own? So many threads stretch between you and other creatures of your world. Pitiful, worthless links ready to shatter at the slightest touch. A muddled, erratic, pointless tangle. It resonates and merges with the voices that have already dug their foul roots into your consciousness. A moment later you realize that all these voices are the myriad manifestations of the same call that has finally invaded your mind. Hmm. You, you are to blame for Theodore's death? The vision lets out a cawing laugh. I am the beginning and the end, and all that courses in between. I am the voice of the truth that is destined to triumph, for this triumph is the terminal point of every twisted maze of fate. Your head begins to spin and vicious drops slither down your cheeks. You blink and you are no longer looking at Theodora. It is the traitor of Voidver, just as fluid and ephemeral as the previous apparition. The same terrifying voice seethes from his lips. The aspirant vowed to return with a trophy, a relic that could serve the edge of daybreak. That fate was assured in the steps chosen, and yet, you broke the unbreakable when you took the aspirant's place. I see you on the day when the final dawn rises over the iron world. I see you by my side on that day, the day of my resurrection. The image is scattered by invisible sorcerous winds, and you see Adira, her eyes aglow with the same sinister flame. Your image is woven into the tapestry of things to come. I am the will of the Weaver of Destinies, and today I will weave a new thread of elusive possibilities and fickle chances. The thread that will lead you out of the maw of irreversibility. The thread that will help you find the keys to salvation. The thread that will guide you and the weapon of our return to me. I don't really want anything to do with you besides your demise. A cavalcade of hazy glimpses of a future yet unknown passes before your eyes. A flash of crimson, purple. The images replace one another in a violent kaleidoscope without ever letting you get a proper look at them. Through the rippling in mirage, you see a twisted image of Abelard, the loyal seneschal of the dynasty. The path is set, child of the dawn. The thread is woven. Follow it, servant of mine. I don't wanna. Revor turns around and looks up at you. He hesitates for a few moments, then addresses Abelard, who is standing next to you. Uh, Seneschal, the navigator's sanctum is silent. The Vox signal is stable, which means... Abelard nods absent-mindedly. The navigator gave his life battling the storm that nearly claimed the Von Valancius flagship. We will honor his memory along with that of all who died this day. Revor does not look away. He is giving you a hard stare, his white brows furrowed. Seneschal, will you tell us now? Who is that? Where is the Lord Captain? As T First Officer, uh. it is my duty to inform you with the greatest regret and indelible sorrow that Lord Captain Theodora von Falatius is dead. May her memory never fade from the annals of the dynasty. By right of blood succession, and with the absence of other kin who could challenge this decision. Say nothing. It is hereby declared that the successor to Theodora von Valancius is her heir, the rightful inheritor of the warrant of trade, and the title of rogue trader. The official ascension ceremony will be held at a later time. In the interim, oh, have you lost your tongues? Hail your lady. It is because of her toils that we all still live. Huzzah! It is I, the new Lord Captain of the Von Valancius the Dean flagship. Is done, I, my apologies. I meant to say, Lord Captain. Hey, it's okay if you slip up occasionally, Abelard. I barely get your name right occasionally. <laughs> All right. We're finally done with the opening of the game. The Golly! The of the Master of Whispers was fruitless, but victory came at a great cost. Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius perished along with her heir, Edelthrad, and thousands of crew members.
that hope remained. For the second in line to the rogue trader dynasty survived. And through the strength of her resolve, saved those who were counting on her for protection. Those subtitles were so out of sync. Holy hell. Ooh, ballistic skill also increases critical hit chance. Oh, I'm putting so many points into that. Holy hell. Deep shadows of weariness can be seen on Abelard's face, though the old officer's eyes are keen. They take over, or they rake over you from head to toe. He frowns, mutters something, then nods to himself. Well then, your ladyship. You cannot help but notice that Seneschal does not know how to talk to you or where to begin. His hesitation brings an involuntary smirk to your face, as though someone else entirely is gloating at the old officer's confusion. Seeing your smile, Abelard pulls himself together. Yeah, sorry, that was the, the demon hiding inside my brain. You must now hold your first officer's briefing in your new role as Lord Captain. For many of those who are about to join us on the bridge, this will also be their first briefing. We sustained massive losses among the senior and middle-ranking officers. Some posts have had to be filled by the deputy's deputy's deputy, while others go unfilled entirely. And now the deck clans are deciding who will take over the leaderless crews. Hmm. What is on the agenda for this meeting? Reports on the condition of the ship and the crew. The Lord Captain is not usually drawn away from her important affairs to attend such routine briefings, but this is not a unique situation. I am still receiving updates from across the ship, and they are not encouraging. Getting this bird to fly could take a gargantuan effort, even so far as you personally negotiating with the authorities of the system we are currently in. So prepare to hear a bevy of complaints and excuses, your ladyship. Take this opportunity to get a good look at the officers who work six decks away from the bridge, and they in turn will have an honor of beholding the visage of their Lord Captain. Uh, how, did, uh, how did we come to lose so many officers? It appears the heretics were deliberately targeting the vessel's command. They knew exactly whom they were looking for and where they could be found, which is unsurprising given that their informant on board was our own master of whispers. Yeah. Where even is he? Have you found him? No, Lord Captain. In all the commotion, his trail went cold. Our people are still on the hunt for him and any mutineers who may still be skulking in the ship's many corridors. But frankly, I would not be surprised to hear that we are now one shuttle short. I'm afraid that it will be some time before he answers for all that he has wrought. Bastard. That's okay. He can bide his time. I can accumulate my power. And then we can take him down properly. I'm ready to start the briefing. Summon the officers. With a gesture, Abelard relays the order to the ad adjutant at the far end of the magnificent chamber. Oh, you found a consumable item. I don't care. A dozen pairs of eyes bore into you. The expressions revealing restraint, joy, curiosity, and wariness. Attention, officers. You have been granted an honor. Lord Captain Jade Von Valancius will personally conduct today's briefing. Our most gracious Lord Captain is ready to hear your reports. Hmm. Perhaps you would introduce those present, Abelard? As you wish, your ladyship. Abelard points to a tall, slender woman whose body seems to contain as many implants as it does flesh. Vigdis Suri Otta of the Tullaman line, our new Vox Master. It is an honor to serve your ladyship. The Vox Master offers a deep bow. Aboard this vessel, you have at your command thousands of crew members and hundreds of officers and section chiefs. I am responsible for receiving, processing, and sending all communications between you and them, as well as external sources. I am your eyes and mouth, Lord Captain. Besides her is Ravor, the Master Helmsman. He steers our ship along the course set by Lord Captain and monitors the void around us to ensure that we do not stray into an asteroid field or a pirate trap. The bearded man with a pale, almost transparent skin, large dark circles under his eyes, and a dour expression that seems hardwired into his face gives a sullen nod. Hail, Lord Captain. This here ship's as good as home to me, so rest assured she's in safe hands. 
I'll die before I let her come to any grief. And lastly, our High Factorum Janris Donrock, who oversees supplies, procurement, and the general material well-being of the ship. Dressed in an embroidered jacket, the heavy-set man with oiled hair offers an uh, 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 obsequious smile and bows. It is an honor, your ladyship. You may trust me with all matters concerning your, sh your comfort. Everything will be done to the highest standard. In the second row, we have the three officers charged with overseeing the ship's vital functions. The Master of Ordnance is responsible for the artillery aboard. The Infernus Master, whose crew work is to prevent and extinguish fires on the ship. And lastly, the Drives Master, servant of the Omnissiah. The three officers salute you. The Infernus Master does so with confidence, while the Master of Ordnance betrays nervousness. The Drives Master offers a salute resembling a dance, involving the complicated manipulation of all of the Tech, tech Priest's uh, Mechanendrites. Tentacle-like, robotic limb, prosthetic, surgically attached to spine. Wow. Is that everyone? Unfortunately, our choir master, the esteemed Zachary Weiss, head of the Astropath section, is unable to join us. He's in charge of a communications with distant uh, star systems. Master Weiss has been in trance for some time now, attempting to contact other planets in the Von Valancius Protectorate and inform them of Lady Theodora's passing and Conrad Voitver's treachery. I will deliver a report to your ladyship on the Astropath's progress as soon as it is possible to do so. Thank you, Master Victus. All others, re all others present are adjutants, secretaries, and deputants. They are here to make a record of proceedings. Lovely. All right. Uh, I guess let's get this party started from top to the bottom. Infernus Master, what do you have to say? Yes, Lord Captain. The tall young man bows his head in deference. I can report that all fires across all decks have now been extinguished. The preliminary damage assessment, in terms of material losses and crew casualties, has been completed. The results have been submitted to the Seneschal and the High Factorum. The post post the post passed to him after the previous Infernus Master and his next three deputies expired in the line of duty. Abelard remarks in a low voice pitched for your ears only. The lad is managing well so far. He can take the heat, so to speak. Good, good. I sure hope that he's able to take the heat and put out the fires. High Factorum, what do you have to report? We are toiling day and night to compile a full account to the lo of the losses. The task will require next to no involvement from your ladyship. I will personally ensure that all damaged components are given into the tech priest's hands for attention, and that all lost supplies are replaced. There is only one resource that I cannot replace single-handedly, and that is people. We have lost more than 2,000 crew members, and unfortunately this number is not confined to the scum from the lower decks, which are easily replaced, but also includes trained professionals. I'm going to need you to... Take account of human lives a little bit more there, Janris. We'll be able to make up our losses on the nearest planet, Rykad Minoris. However, the planet, the whole system in fact, belongs to the winter scale rogue trader dynasty. We cannot simply begin recruiting on the planet without first coming to an understanding with the governor. In that respect, I am powerless. Negotiations at this level are a matter for the rogue trader. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll try and talk it over. I might have to start actually dumping points into persuasion like I was originally thinking I would. Now that I'm actually in control of the, the ship, well, now that I'm a leader of the ship, I gotta take that into account. Especially true given Kalogos winter skills penchant for attacking first and attack or er, asking questions later, and the kind of thick skulled thugs he usually installs as governors on his planets, rumbles Abelard, frowning. Hmm. Drives master, I'll hear from you now. A voice distorted by a Vox retranslator emerges from under the tech priest's scarlet hood. Lord Captain, the foes that set upon this noble void ship destroyed the repositories of hundreds of machine spirits. The great warp engine entrusted into my charge is unharmed, thank the Omnissiah, but its spirit mourns its dead brethren. We have not yet identified a prayer protocol capable of assouging its sorrow and anger. With great sorrow, I must also report that the engine... Engine Seer Prime, Overseer, and Spiritual Authority of all Tech Priests on board fell in battle. The, Am the Magos was betrayed by the little flesh that remained part of him. A most terrible loss. There is no one among my comrades aboard whose experience and comprehension of the Sacred Protocols equals that of the fallen Magos. We require a replacement. Would someone care to translate these Steam Drives Master's words? No, that's mean to say. I see. Thank you. The Tech Priest bows her head. Master Helmsman, uh, deliver your status report. 
Right you are, Lord Captain. To cut a long story short, the outlook is bleak. The ships sound, more or less, but without our engine seer, prime, and navigator who fell in battle, we have no way out of the system. If we try to set so much as a toe inside the warp, I don't know what will happen first. Our warp drive being torn to pieces or all of us melting into the bulkheads. Your ladyship, if you will allow me to interject, when we arrived in this system, my crew followed standard protocols and conducted a count of all the available communication channels in the region. One of them was a Navis Nobilite station. The station maintains complete Vox silence, but even its presence here inspires hope. To have located a navigator in the very same system is an incredible stroke of luck. A true blessing from the God Emperor. Ah, a sharp bolt of pain lances through your skull as if in response to what you just heard. You understand that it is not the God Emperor you should thank for such good fortune. The words of the demon that appeared before you during the translation to real space echo in your mind. I am the will of the Weaver of Destinies, and today I will weave a new thread of elusive possibilities and fickle chances. The thread that will lead you out of the maw of irreversibility. The thread that will help you find the keys to salvation. Oh god, it's manipulating reality on us already! If I were you, I'd grab this chance with both hands. Or else you'll soon be eyeing up asteroids to use as your new residence. In slightly less shitty news, we can go around and around this system till our heads are swimming. As long as the Promethium and supplies last. And if any thick as grok shit low lives come sniffing around, we'll be able to take them out. So don't you worry on that score. Thank you, Master Helmsman. Master of Ordnance, what do you have to say? The Master of Ordnance gives you a gloomy look. No, my job's simple. Maintain the arsenal and fire where I'm told. But just ask anyone. We've got no able crew. No Lord Captain. Master of Ordnance, you forget yourself. Ah, so what? comes the officer's hostile and bitter reply. It is as if a dam has burst inside and all his pent-up emotion are rushing out of him. The ship's in ruins! Every second officer's dead and now we've got a green Lord Captain who's supposed to lead us to void knows where! Silence! The bridge's magnificent glass panes seem to tremble under the force of Ebel Lord's roar. Enforcers, seize this mutineer! Damn! I didn't really mind, but- Oh, well, damn, he got fucking knocked out! Ebel Lord grunts. If only one officer out of the whole lot has fallen to pieces, then that's not bad at all. Your ladyship, I do humbly apologize on behalf of the entire crew. What would you have us do with the Master of Ordnance? The former Master of Ordnance, I should say. Besides find replacement, that is. Well, we already have one lined up. Well, stand down. Release him. I have no intention of punishing a man for a moment of weakness. Not after the terrible attack we have endured. Abelard stares unblinkingly at the Master of Ordnance. Cease your sniveling. You disgrace yourself in the entire clan. Enough! The hysterics are over. Let us resume. The Master of Ordnance stands up, wiping the blood from his broken nose. His face is the picture of shock. What just happened seems to be dawning on him only now, in the knowledge of the fate he so narrowly escaped. <laughs> I think he'll think better of us at this point. To summarize, we have sustained serious losses in crew members and require a new engineer prime and navigator. Is this all that is preventing us from continuing the voyage? Precisely, Lord Captain. But bear in mind that this will not be the end of our trials. The ship's systems must properly uh, must be properly inspected for major damage, which can only be carried out at Footfall Station, home to the only dockyard in the sector. But we will never reach Footfall without first solving these three immediate problems. Hmm. What can you tell me about the system in which we currently find ourselves? I cede to the Vox Master on this point. Mistress Toleman? We are in the Rykard Star System, and our voyage here was undertaken on the orders of your ladyship's predecessor. There are three inhabited planets in the system, and our attempts to send Vox messages have produced confounding results. The Navis Nobilite Station has not, has not simply failed to answer, it seems to be maintaining total Vox silence. However, we did receive a distress signal from the prison planetoid in the system. And Rykard Minoris itself is also not responding to our hails. But what is most alarming is that our augurs have intercepted signals from the planet that seem to indicate ongoing hostilities on the planet. Damn, everything sounds fucked up. The situation is not very encouraging. Without a navigator, a tech priest, and new crew members, we won't be able to travel anywhere. Therefore, we must go to the planet and the Novus Nobilite Station and find out what in the void is going on. Well, thank you for all your reports. Dismissed. The assembled officers salute you as one. <sighs> God. Abelard, can't you at least talk for me? I got...
Ugh. There's so much strain. All right. Your ladyship, there is one thing. A confidential matter of the utmost importance. Lady Theodora. Abelard hesitates. Your eternally esteemed predecessor brought the ship here to this system for a reason. She was given a secret commission. You perhaps are wondering who has the authority to commission a rogue trader to do anything. And I shall tell you. The Lord Inquisitor, the Hand of the Emperor, the Chief Architect of his will in the Coronis Expanse. Well, damn. Alright. I would be honored to fulfill the Inquisitor's commission. What is it he asked of Theodora? Lady Theodora was, seek was to seek out the Lord Inquisitor's right-hand man, one Heinrichs von Kallax. An interrogator, you understand. All I know is that he is somewhere in this system, that we must find him and offer him whatever assistance he requires, and then deliver him to footfall in the Furibundus system. Finding him without any more information to go on will be difficult indeed, but an Inquisitor is an important individual. The authorities in the system, either the Navis Nobelite or the Governor of Rykard Minoris, might note something. That is all of it, your ladyship. You have a great deal of work ahead of you, but it is a mere taste of the daily burden of a rogue trader. Soon you must take up the reins of the Von Valancius Protectorate. Abelard gives you another scrutinizing look, as if trying to gauge how long you'll hold out under this mountain of problems. His face softens slightly, and it seems he's about to offer some words of encouragement. Adira? Sister Argenta? Argenta, explain yourselves. The sister battle Grimly nods uh, toward Adira. The Psyker is suffering some ailment, or dark madness. She insisted on seeing the rogue trader. I judge that it would be unwise to leave her unsupervised. For a brief moment, Sister Argenta's voice sounds hesitant. I was also hoping to approach you with a personal request, but I can wait. Speak with me when you have time, rogue trader. Yeah, 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 no worry. We'll, we'll, we can do that. Adira's glazed eyes rove over those assembled. One word bursts from her lips. Daybreak. Idira, come to your senses. Ah, damn it. Idira presses her fingers to her temples in desperation. Your ladyship. Here's the thing. I was trying to see the immediate future and it hit me so hard. My head is still spinning. Something very strange is heading our way. And I can't make it make out what it, what it is, no matter how hard I try. A single word is all I can make out. Daybreak. Or maybe it's dawn? And it's ringing and ringing like an echo, like a bell. But if it's daybreak, then why is it so dark? Uh, the dawn for a dark entity, more like it. We cannot extract any information of value from a single word. Can you tell us anything else, Mistress Talas? No, not yet. The voices are going berserk, all shouting at once. I can't make sense of any of it. As soon as I know or sense anything, I'll report it, alright? Lord Captain, if you want me to take a closer look into your future, find me on the bridge and we can talk. Lady Theodora was well served by my whispers on many occasions. And I'm sure you would benefit from them as well. The Psyker's bitten lips stretch into a wry smile. Well, if there's nothing else of value to report, I declare this briefing concluded. It is time to get to work. And by work, I mean continue to talk to a whole lot of people. God. Use the system map in the center of the bridge to issue orders to the crew. The manufacturing complex is reporting complete recovery after the fire. Oh fuck, there's a lot here. A thin, pale woman stands out among the rest of the crew. There is a thick bundle of cables coming out of the back of her skull and disappearing under her ceremonial garment. And you see the grate of a quietly humming vox where her mouth should be. The woman sees you and bows her head in a respectful greeting. How may I serve you, Lord Captain? Hmm. Connect me to the vessel's main channel. I wish to bolster the morale of my crew. <laughs> Fellowship test succeeded. The Voxmaster nods immediately and presses several switches on the device she is holding. It is done, Lord Captain. You address the crew with a rousing speech and hear your voice roll through the ship, reaching even the normally quiet corners of the vessel. When the broadcast ends, you hear distant shouts of approval. Woo! That'll be all for now. I live to serve, Lord Captain. I guess I'm gonna give a chat to all of my people in charge at least once. Hey, my lord. Lord Captain. Oh, you wanna talk or doing random side shit, huh? 
Hmm. Let's talk about things that may be useful to me as the rogue trader. A noble aspiration, Lord Captain. I am ready to acquaint you with all the particulars that interest you. Outline the situation that Corona's expands for me. What do I need to know and keep in mind? This is a topic for an official briefing, not a casual conversation. But I will try to answer succinctly. And if you permit, in my own words. <sighs> The Coronas Expanse is considerably removed from the heart of the Imperium. This means that local warp routes become useless within months. Established pathways are regularly subject to attacks from all kinds of rabble. And in the only major port, the Imperium's frigates find themselves moored alongside pirate vessels. Until recently, the Coronas Expanse could hardly have been called a region of the Imperium. The situation has changed with the arrival of the Lord Inquisitor. But not by much. This place operates under its own rules, you see. More radical, so to speak. But ones that allow for a non-standard approach where there is a promise of victory. The Corona's Expanse has considered rogue trader territory for a reason. Only rogue traders have sufficient military might, audacity, and the rights granted them by the Warrant to survive the leap into the unexplored part of the Expanse. And in the event of a successful outcome, to hold on to whatever they managed to capture on the frontier. Oh boy. Well, it sounds like the frontier is really trying to push on us. Yeah. That's worrisome. But who do I need to know about out here? In the first instance, you should treat official representatives of the Imperium with respect. The Expanse may be on the fringes, but it still numbers among the territories of the Golden Throne. The arrival of the Lord Inquisitor has turned the Corona's Expanse into a less wild and uncontrolled region, to the regret of some individuals who had grown inured to the local lawlessness. Rogue traders such as yourself are also servants of the Imperium. They have been accorded special rights and powers. They wield immense authority within their territory, and they enjoy absolute respect in other parts of the Expanse. The most powerful of them are Caligos Winterscale, and Incendia Bastal Chorda. Tread carefully when dealing with either of them. Well, if we probably we want to deal with them for a while. Claimed territory, which is what footfall is. Among the scum that dwells on that handful of asteroids, there are three factions that wield considerable influence in the sector. The first is the Kasbala Commission, organized crime in its most primitive form. It holds sway over the liege of footfall and has links to rogue trader Winterscale. The second faction is an offshoot of our shining Ecclesiarchy, followers of St. Drusus. They are actively building their forces and hold influence over rogue trader Chorda. And finally, the third faction, the Explorators, a wing of the Adeptus Mechanicus. They are willing to die and kill for the secrets of the ancient technological heresies that are hidden among the stars of the Coronas Expanse. Adeptus Mechanicus, the technological organization also known as the Priesthood of Mars, which maintains constructs and honors the sacred technologies of humanities. They sound pretty cool. Conrad, our previous master of whispers, what can you tell me about his betrayal? What do you think he'll do next? Oh, you know, Lord Captain, I am no admirer of fine art. But when we next find ourselves in a civilized port with time to spare, I will promptly find an artist and commission a portrait of the individual to whom you refer, with a hole between the eyes. Conrad Voitveer. That he committed his treachery and escaped with his life was an unforgivable oversight. We both served Lord Captain Theodora for many years, and we never saw eye to eye. He was brash. He was never afraid of assuming responsibility, and he willingly took on difficult tasks. I am loath to admit it, but the Von Valatius Protectorate continues to reap the fruits of his labors to this day. His service always garnered my respect. But everything else about him made me want to wring the neck of that two-faced snake. If you are taking comfort in the thought that we will hear no more of Conrad, prepare to be disappointed. You thwarted his plans, his meticulously plotted and nurtured treachery. <laughs> he is sure to attempt to strike at you, and he will use his contacts and knowledge of the Protectorate to do so. The only question, Lord Captain, is whether you will be able to anticipate his next steps. Eh, I don't really feel the need to anticipate his next steps. 
Let him come after us. We'll As stop him. Wish, Lord Captain. Well... I'd like to know more about you. As you wish, Lord Captain. What would you like to know? Tell me about yourself. What were you before you became Theodora Seneschal? I used to be an officer in the Navis Imperialis. No. I used to be is not quite right. It was not simply a job. It was my calling. The essence of my life. I was proud to serve Lord Captain Theodora. But in my heart and mind, I'm still an officer of the Imperium. I met Lord Captain Theodora on a mission where the Imperial Navy was providing reinforcement to the rogue trader's army on one of the frontier worlds. Our acquaintance was uh, not easy. Working with people outside the Navy hierarchy has never been my strong suit. It was to my great surprise then that after the mission's completion, I received a referral to leave my service in the Navy and join the rogue trader's personal council. Uh, it was a difficult choice for me. But I saw in the offer a chance to serve the interests of humanity even more effectively than in the Navis Imperialis. You do not need me to tell you just how remarkable a person Lord Captain Theodora was. I recognized her at once as a true leader and formidable creative force. One who had built a protectorate amidst the dangers and wildness of the Expanse. Leaving the Imperial Navy is far from easy. Why were you permitted to quit your post? I mean, that one's a given. She's a rogue trader, right? You could say there was no one among the Naval Command who was willing to impede the wishes of the rogue trader. To do so would be to risk their own position and their relationship with Theodora. <laughs> well, the Lord Captain possessed certain contacts in the Imperial Navy. Contacts which she used to request help during the conflict on the border world. And which enabled her to make me an offer that resulted in my joining her retinue. The Narvis Imperialis is an ancient institution with its own mandates and musterlists. On occasion, in the heat of an official briefing, or an informal discussion, I violated those rules, determined to press my point. It is challenging to choose the words to accurately express my opinion on a situation or the actions of others that do not sound overly scathing or confrontational. Many in command were inclined to view my manner of speaking as unbefitting a person of my rank. Hmm. We passed a test I didn't even... Uh, a test I didn't even know we, we were going to have there. Jeez. The way you talk about Theodora, I'm beginning to think you were in love with her. What? Lord Captain, any allegations of improper feelings or unsanctioned relations are utterly baseless and bordering on the insulting. Utterly baseless. <laughs> utterly, uh, okay. That didn't really convince me, actually. I, I chose that as like a joking option, and yet, here we <laughs> Hmm. Do you have a family? I am a widower. I am a father of four. And if my information is not outdated, a grandfather of eleven. Wow. My family lives on Dargonus. None of my children express any eagerness or aptitude for serving aboard ship. And I would hardly have insisted that they follow in my footsteps. Jesus. I, w I wasn't expecting to be like, yeah, I'm also a granddad of 11 kids. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Abelard. Of course. You know, you may call me by my first name if you wish. I thank you for the honor, but I must decline. As a former military officer, I believe in the importance of order in all things, including the chain of command. You are the Lord Captain, my direct superior. I am not prepared to address you in any way other than as regulation dictates. Hey, that's totally fine with me. Sometimes I enjoy keeping a level of order. All right, I'll see you later then. Lord Captain. Uh, where is Adira? We also have a couple other people. Hey, Janris. Oh, my God. Oh, God, there's so much dialogue, and he's not gonna, he's, he's not gonna be voiced. There's so many. Oh, my God. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna take a small little breather here. 
So much fucking reading. Be right back. All right. I think this guy is gonna have like a lot of dialogue. And random flavor text, and I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm <laughs> if it's not a, like a major, major character or someone I'm genuinely interested in, I don't care. Uh, I'll read like what he says. Greetings, your lady, ladyship, or greetings, your ladyship. Generous Donrack, at your service. All right. Uh, I want to know more about the people who buy our plunder. Of course, Lord Captain. Who interests you exactly? We most often deal with the followers of Saint Drusus. The explorer towards the- I don't care, actually. I don't care. I don't- you <laughs> change the subject. Um... I wish to bolster my retinue with skilled fighters. Rest assured, there are people of the most outstanding talents among your, the thousands of your crew. I will contact the overseers at once. Nice. Oh! Huh. So I guess we get to choose... We can make a new character. I just don't know, like, if this replaces... Anything... That I should be worried about, but no, we're good. We're... Uh... Close that out. My retinue and I are needed training. Oh, hey, look at that! Okay. There is an area to respec skills, so that's good. There's definitely going to be a point where, like, I, I have a bit more of an understanding of what, what my options are. Adira! Hmm, the tall middle-aged woman stares straight ahead, her eyes vacant as she rubs the implant in her temple. Her collarbone is undone. Eh, or her, not her collarbone, her collar is undone. And one of the class is on the verge of falling off. Sensing your presence, Adira turns her head towards you and offers you a crooked smile. Even as her eyes look right through you. Uh... What's it like being a psyker? Um, Lord Captain, forgive me. But it would be like talking to a person born blind about colors. I could spend hours explaining, but it wouldn't make any sense to you. Every psyker feels their connection with the warp in their own way. One person might see spots and shadows out of the corner of their eye. Another feels fingers running down their spine. As for me, I've got a door in my head. One that's open just a crack. There's no way to close it, no matter how hard I try. I've just had to get used to the whispers from the other side. When I need to use it for work, I listen in more closely. But I usually just try not to notice it. You know, you said that, like, you wouldn't be able to explain it, but, like, I think I get it a little bit. How do you live with this whispering in your head? Training, habit, and a little amasek and a couple other things you can get on the lower decks. If you put all those together, it makes things bearable. <laughs> Sometimes I even wonder if I'm imagining half the voices I hear. You know, when life on board gets a little boring. Better than listening to the living, anyhow. What would happen if your door burst open? <laughs> well, if the door opens, that means somebody's planning to come in, right? But screw them. They're not coming through. Trust me. I know how to keep my valuable head locked up tight. Okay. Well, you're a diviner. Can you see my future? All right. That's what I'm here for, after all. So... I'm just going to lean on that door in my head a little more, prick up my ears, and listen to what the warp's got to say about you. If you'll allow it, I can listen right now. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's hear what they're whispering about you. Hmm? <laughs> Adira laughs, rubs her hands together, and suddenly freezes with a vacant smile on her face. Her head slightly tilted. You feel goosebumps appear on your skin, and your collar begins to waver ever so slightly. 
as if moved by a breeze from a half-open door. Seek not on firm ground, but in a golden hall suspended in the void. There waits a child without kin, but with a name blind to truth. She draws the brush across the canvas and does not notice that her palette is full not of paint, but of blood. And with each smear, this well does not deplete, but fills and fills up to the brim. One thing is clear. When this vessel overflows, none will remain unstained. Yeesh, and that's about me? Among the blind men and false prophets, a red-robed sage seeks the answer to a question. He does not know that it is not the answer he must seek, but the question that will draw everything into focus. Will you help him, rogue trader? But mark that sometimes ignorance is sweeter than oblivion. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come there, Adira. A chained hound chases after glimmers of the aurora, but sparks in the scent of oil confound his nose. A chain trails after him. What will happen if you pick it up? Will you become his mistress, or merely another beast in the pack of his true lord? That sounds like we'd be picking up a heretic at some point. I don't know about that. The glow of dawn bursts forth from its prison. Dungeon walls cannot contain the dark essence wallowing in the dust. A naive cub pushes his nose into a familiar hand, one that holds death in twisted glass. Cherish it or cast it off as a burden. The sword of change has already been raised. What is one more life to it? <sighs> I'm sorry, Lord Captain. The voices are going wild. I can't make out a thing. I'll try to rein them in, somehow, but for now... <laughs> I, you said plenty, I guess. I, I, I gotta be worried about a few things in the future, I suppose. Hmm. Did you know Theodore von Valantius well? None of the officers knew the Lord Captain well. Not even Abelard, and she was always closer to him than anyone else. She told me from the off that if I ever listened to anything in the warp about her without her permission, I'd be going out through the airlock. I'm not an idiot, so I never stuck my nose where it didn't belong. Only when I was asked. Okay. It's hard to wrap my head around the fact that she's gone. Lady von Valancius gave me everything I have. She opened the stars to me and the paths between them. I... I still think I can hear her voice. I mean, she could be trying to communicate to you from whatever afterlife there may be in this universe. I'm not actually sure how that one works. Things are strained between you and Argenta, isn't that right? The little sister is afflicted with her own set of voices. Ones that whisper to her about corruption and heresy. The silly girl doesn't realize that if she wants to find the source, she needs to start by looking in her own head. Eesh. Right. Well, um... What can you tell me about your abilities? <laughs> what are you talking about, Lord Captain? Mm, you're a Psyker. Psykers are only granted the right to live with the Emperor's blessing. Have you ever been to Terra? Look, Lady Theodora couldn't care less if some eggheads measured my brains or not. It's not about the seal on your forehead, get it? It's about what's in your gut, if it's rotten or not. My gut's stronger than the adamantine on this here ship. And my implants are better than the ones they put in you on your terror. If they weren't, I wouldn't have lived as long as I have. Where the hell did you come from anyways? Lyra, an outlying world in the heathen stars region. In the Coronis Expanse, the deeper you go, the less visible the Astronomicon gets, and the less people know about the Imperium. The arrival of a rogue trader is the best thing that can happen to a world like that. The very best. Okay. Tell me about your planet then. It's an out-of-the-way planetoid between two faint stars. On Lyra, a dozen local tyrants fight over five measly continents, but they use everything they can to win. From poison to psychers. I haven't been there in many years, but there's nothing for me to miss. Trust me. I can believe you. The, the, 
From what I understand, the circumstances in a large chunk of the Warhammer 40k universe for humans, it's not great. Pretty but awful, here on in fact. The ship is a different story altogether. I saw more wonders in my first year serving Lady von Valancius than I'd seen in my whole life on Lyra. Like my first journey through the warp, I was in bed for three days. I felt like supernovas were exploding in my head. I only found out later that I'd gotten off easy. <laughs> Just through the bulkhead in the bay next to mine, a whole team turned into... <laughs> Look at me rambling on, Lord Captain. Pay no attention. No, no, keep going. What what happened your first time across the warp? It wasn't... It wasn't like it was a very fun trip, Lord Captain. But look, if you want to be entertained, ha, I'm the woman for the job. I'll entertain you with one of the stories from my collection, no problem. But if you want to hear about the time I melted everyone in the bay next door, well, I just don't really want to go into the details on that one, all right? Oh, well... That, I, uh, all right, yeah, I guess I, well, I didn't, I didn't think that, like, you were partly responsible for them potentially dying, Jesus. Uh, have you ever been off the ship? Mm, a few times, not many. And if I think about it, why would I want to? I've got everything I need here. All the whispers I hear are familiar ones. They almost feel like family. And if I want to hear about the nightmares off the ship, I can. After some Amisek. <laughs> but don't go getting the wrong idea. If I have to, I'll follow you to the edge of the galaxy. But can you go beyond the edge of the galaxy is my question, Adira. Hmm, that's fine. Of course, Lord Captain. I must take my leave. Of course. Always at your service. Whenever you need me. I wonder where... Argenta is. Uh, let's see. How do I get over to her? Can I open these other ones? Rumors, Warden of the Expanse, contracts, no contracts. Coronas Expanse map. Oh shit. I just wanted to like see what happens if I click on it. Star Systems, the events of Warhammer 40k. Rogue Trader take place in a vast region of space known as the Coronis Expanse. This sector is composed of numerous star systems, many of which will get you uh, many of which you'll get a chance to visit. You'll find yourself scouring the void in search of routes leading to a new uncharted system or a new uncharted system, discovering more routes as you explore the expanse. What you see before you is the map of one such system. Each star system contains objects you can interact with. Such objects are marked as points of interest. Move your ship to a point of interest, then click left mouse button on it to initiate the event, or open the planet view. Oh. So I'm... over here? Oh! Oh! Ooh. There's a lot of stuff on Rykad Minora, sheesh. Artificial facility? What's up with that? Hmm. The Explorator fleet is not aware. <laughs> what have we here, Lord Captain? It's not very noticeable, but there's a void ship sitting in a local asteroid field. It sure is quiet, like it's huddled up in, on there on purpose. It's not like I'm surprised the thing is more scrap heap than ship at this point. Somebody sure went to town on it. We're registering critical damage to the hull and depressurization of several components. 
Oh, there's an incoming transmission now, too. Hear us! We do not require assistance. Repeat, do not require assistance. Copy, keep following. They'll pass us by, won't they? Emperor, protect us. Lord Captain, I am told our augurs cannot determine the allegiance of the vessel. To be brief, there is an unidentified and badly damaged vessel within an asteroid field near the Raikadi Phila colony that is refusing help, which, not to put into fine uh, pro point on it, has not yet been offered to them. Hmm. Can we establish communication? Let the vessel identify itself. Yes, Lord Captain. The connection is established. Unknown vessel, we are receiving you. Identify yourselves. I repeat, identify yourselves. For a brief moment, the Vox only hisses and snaps, and then several voices at once start shouting over, Do not tell! Tell him! We're done for! This is Thunderfang. We are, one of the voices falters, a merchant vessel. Do you copy? We are a private merchant vessel. A merchant vessel? Of course they are. Damn my stupid head, where did I hear this name before? Thunderfang. Hmm. Thunderfang, why can we not identify you? Why? I don't know. What if... Uh, certainly not. Our vessel is badly damaged. Damage preventing the correct identification. We assure you, peaceful merchant vessel. Thunderfang does not require aid. Uh-huh. Ravor, damage report on the unknown vessel. Telemetry shows multiple hull breaches, most likely caused by the guns of a combat ship. Several compartments are leaking air. The bridge has been completely obliterated. Two of the engines are critically damaged. Somebody gave them a thrashing so solid they barely managed to limp away. Thunderfang, your vessel's badly damaged. What happened to you? The Vox responds by bursting into a cacophony of sounds, words, and emotions. Someone chuckles bitterly, another whir another swears with some foul expletives, and then another hisses, furiously demanding that the others shut up. We managed to make out little from this noise. We were just flying, minding our own business, straight out of the blue and opened fire. Miracle we could get away. Emperor protected. And then more fire. Who? Void only knows. Roasted our tail, bombed everything. The folks... Our folks are left without help. We never got to him. Hmm. Thunderfang, stop playing games and explain what you forgot in the area. And this time, I highly recommend the truth. Happy now? What have you done, idiot? Ah, uh, it's too late now. The Vox Channel is again filled with angry whispering of several voices. Do you copy? We are from the fellow of the Void. We did not come here to loot on a different business. To help our own out of jail. Do not hurt the lease. We already had our chronos cleaned. How about striking a deal? Our hold is full of lunder. I mean goods. In case you are unaware, Lord Captain, the Fellowship of the Void is a disorderly assembly of several dozen pirate factions in the Coronas Expanse. They consider themselves above regular heretics solely because they sometimes have Vox conversations with those whom they are about to board. Word up to me, I would make them eat a salvo from the macro cannons to shake the scum loose from the dicks. They certainly deserve it. Hmm, High Factorum Janus uh, Donrock. The honeyed voice of the High Factorum interrupts the translation with a, a light cough. I would wait on destroying the vessel if I were you. Although the moral aspects of their livelihood do cause some awkward questions, the Fellowship of the Void remains a major supplier of goods to the local market. Perhaps you will find dealing with them acceptable, especially when jumping to warp is impossible. Hmm. Fine, Thunderfang, prepare for a commercial exchange. Oh shit, they're just straight up, uh, <laughs> straight up trading with me, okay. They have a bunch of other items that I current can't currently get because I need to build up reputation with them, I guess. Hmm. Brutal strike? Holy shit. Use the charge ability for one AP less. Character wearing this armor will dodge 20% of average enemy attacks in this chapter. Plus five armor if the wearer has no cover. Yeah, those are all great for him. Well, I guess we can try and be friendly with these folks. 
here. Uh, have have a sword or something. Uh. Show tradable. Hide untradable. I can trade melee weaponry. And that would give me 100 RP. Wow. Okay, well, let's cancel all that. I actually would like to get out of this. Here we go. Back to bridge. Void ship management. Oh, shit. I can upgrade my hull, the ram. We've got a lot of different components to, like, take a look at. Oh, shit. There's upgrades for the ship as well. There's people I can assign to different positions. We'll see how that goes. There were, there's been a... Um, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, there's a Warhammer series of games that are like focused on ship combat. And I do want to play that. I really do. I think I own the first game of it as well. Uh, I'm actually going to... I'm legit going to look that up. Okay. Uh, Warhammer ship game. Battlefleet Gothic Armada. Peggy it just looks super great. Okay, 2016? Holy shit. All right. Where the hell is Argenta? There you are. Rogue traitor. Uh, you said you have a personal request for me? I indeed have a request, Rogue traitor. Are you not going to read out your request? Are you kidding me? The accursed servants of chaos who assaulted this ship took the lives of your loyal crew members. And they orphaned many children, including the progeny of the brave officers who defended their posts until the bitter end. I don't know what customary practices there are for cases like this in Von Valencia's territory, but in the world I'm familiar with, the children of such brave souls could expect to receive some special consideration. Perhaps the rogue trader could meet with the orphans? Hmm... I will meet with them. No formalities needed. These are the children of people who gave their lives to the Von Valancius dynasty. My consideration is the least they deserve. Oh yeah, all right. we're just straight up going there through a loading screen. Adira is a psycho diviner in the service of rogue trader Von Valancius. Daughter of a distant world and a product of a doctrine alien to the Imperium, she perceives the curse of sorcery as a gift she deserves. For only the most skilled and strong can endure the touch of the Immaterium. Years of using her sorcerous powers have cost both Adira's mind and soul dearly. With each passing day, her ability to keep the malignant forces under control weakens. And so the moment when the warp will devour the Diviner without a trace creeps ever closer. Who knows if Adira will be able to come to terms with the inevitable, or if she will turn to other forbidden forces and shirts of salvation. Well, Jesus, that doesn't sound too good. Hey, -o, kids! The motley group of adolescents do not take their eyes off you, gazing at you as if you were a creature straight from a fairy tale. Ah, uh, in in def <laughs> I've never seen that word. Our indefatigable sister has been keeping an eye on these pups. Abelard glances at the gathered children. It is hardly the scholar progenum in here, but we have get provided the orphans on our ship with adequate qu uh, care and instruction. Argenta is standing to the side of the group. At your approach, she perks up and announces, her voice ringing. Brave ones, the master of this ship has appeared before you. The one who guides it through the darkness of the universe by the Emperor's will. Greet your Lord Captain, the rogue trader of the House Von, Val uh, Von Valancius. Hmm... I, the rogue trader and lord captain of this ship, speak to you now. 
Your parents gave their lives for a just cause and brought honor to the Von Valancius banners and those of the Imperium. I am proud of them, and I believe that you will become their worthy heirs. The teenagers hang on your every word with bated breath. Only a few at the very end seem sullen and not particularly impressed by your speech. So what? Why should we care? Our friends and parents died in their dozens for you, noble aunt, and you just give us speeches. Argenta quickly turns to the boy. A flurry of emotions flashes in her dark eyes, like she wants both to calm him and scold him for his impudence. Hmm. If you have things to say, say them without fear. I will listen. The boy smiles grimly. It doesn't matter what we say. It won't bring our parents back, and it won't change our fates either. We'll keep slaving away on this ship until we drop and die like our folks are worse. Let's see... I understand your grief and dismay. Your parents died. It's not an easy thing to go through, but they gave their lives for the truth, for the good of the whole ship, for the Imperium. Do not speak of their honorable fate with anger and disdain. You heard the rogue trader. His words carry the wisdom of the Imperium. It's hard to say whether or not your words have left an impression on the boy, but he nods slowly, then catches himself and gives you an awkward bow. Abelard gives a sign, and servants immediately emerge carrying packaged treats with Von Valancius emblazoned on the wrappers. It appears that the Seneschal came prepared for any contingency. Nice. <laughs> Everybody gets a candy bar! Congratulations! Your parents died! Argenta rubs her temple pensively. She smiles and offers a few more words of encouragement, then leaves the bay. I was hoping I was going to be able to say more. I guess I could have just kept giving a grand speech. I started off grand, but I didn't want to like go too hardcore into it. You know, we gotta be, we gotta be human. Sister Argenta is one of the blessed Adeptus Sor Soriatus, sometimes colloquially referred to as the Daughters of the Emperor. Furious in both battle and prayer, the young, yeah, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, whatever. Ravor! Uh, you're a Voidborn, are you not? That I am. Born into a Helmsman clan in the bowels of a Chartist vessel. I, I've swapped so many different fucking axes for this guy. I'm trying to do, I, I want to do Southern. It feels like he's doing Southern. Started the family tree until I was 15, then my entire clan was butchered in a mutiny by lower hold scum. They spared the young'uns, of course. They did. Kids with implanted connectors make great navigational servitors. But I was having none of it. They weren't going to make a servitor out of me, so I escaped into the crawlways. And then I spent months picking them off, one after the other. Ravor stops abruptly. Ah, uh, you got me talking up a storm. Anyway, yeah, I'm a Voidborn. No, oh, yeah, you can tell me more. Ravor stays silent for a few seconds. Not much to tell. I gutted everyone I could get to, then I fled upward to the middle decks. That's where the Augur operators took me under their wing. They have apprentice helmsmen of their own up there, you see. Nobody asked me any questions, so I stayed. I grew up, trained, got smarter, then ended up a junior helmsman. A dozen years later, Danrock spotted me and lured me away, the cheeky blighter. Tell me about the Voidborn. Lord Captain, I mean no disrespect, but you'd do better to find someone with a knack of conversation like Toloman, the new Vox Master. I ain't the talking type. I just give the ship where she needs to go. Best let folks stick to what they do best. Alright, fine. I'll take my leave. There's like one more person in my... crew that I should talk to? The, the, the guy responsible for stopping fires. Where's... Where's that guy? <laughs> I guess he's not over here. All right, let's set out on a mission, I guess. Uh, 
Uh, oh, why are we just immediately back in the trading thing with Thunderfang? Flamer! This is probably an inevitability. Profit factor is a representation of the relative value of the Trogue Raider's warrant of trade and what opportunities and resources it can call upon. Does that mean that's just my currency? I'm going to assume it's just my currency. Hmm. Let's check the prison planetoid because they're having a whole like riot thing going on. Uh, ooh, it looks like I might be able to have up to six more or like two more party members later on. That's fun. 